So keto is a little bit of a tricky one is because it's become a fad diet. So you guys all know what the ketogenic diet is? Yes, no? So the idea with the ketogenic diet is you eat um, pretty high fat level, moderate protein, and like very, very, very little carbohydrate. And the idea is that your body will take the long chain fatty acids and create ketone bodies from that. Ketone bodies are a byproduct of fatty acid metabolism. They are created when you are low on carbohydrates or low on glucose in the blood because there are certain cells in your body that do need some amount of glucose to run. There are cells that don't have mitochondria because you have to have a mitochondria to utilize long chain fatty acids. But caveat is we have no essential need for carbohydrate. Your body can make all, make all the carbohydrate it needs in house. There's no essential need for that. We do have essential need for certain amino acids from proteins, and we do have essential need for fatty acids from fat, but there is no essential need from carbohydrate. You could eat literally no carbohydrates and survive. You will not die, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't, because it definitely helps the body. Again, body's lazy. <laughs> Give it, you know, help it a little bit. But, so when you don't have a lot of carbohydrate, then, what ends up happening is the body needs to run on something. And so these things, that, the cells that can't run on fatty acids, they can run on ketones. And there are actually certain brains in, or cells in the brain that like ketones so much, they make them in-house. They make them for themselves. They're called astrocytes. They actually do a lot of cleaning up for memory. The ketogenic diet was originally developed as a treatment for epilepsy, or that's really where it kind of became a thing. Super effective at epilepsy. It's actually the most effective treatment for epilepsy. Sadly, you have to fail epileptic drugs like three or four times before they even try it with you. Which maybe make the argument because it, they can't make money off of a diet. They say it's because it's hard. Screw that, I'm celiac. Like, I can't eat wheat, sorry. Like, I can't. So don't tell me that someone who's epileptic is not gonna be willing to put in the effort and the work to not have seizures every day. They're going to do it. It's going to happen. So that's where ketogenics started. Then people found that there, were, there seemed to be other benefit from doing it. The problem is, is the same thing like with intermittent fasting. I don't think it makes sense to be in ketosis all the time or try to put yourself in that state 24-7. Again, variability. And when you look from an evolutionary model, what, what hunter-gatherer tribe or any of these things that we know of would have ever been in pure ketosis all the time, that they would have been consuming enough fat to protein ratio that they would have had potentially ketosis all the time. There's one group that you might think of, the Inuit, because they would eat a lot of whale blubber. Here's the trick though. They actually have a break in, um, in their enzymatic production and they cannot, like they basically can't get into ketosis. <laughs> And like there's like two different paths of ketosis and they can't through one way. Like their body like will physically not allow them to get into ketosis like that. So that's weird, right? The one group of people you would think would be naturally in ketosis more often, their body said, nah, -uh, this isn't a good thing for us to be there all the time. So, but it's also not unhealthy. You wake up in ketosis normally, little mild ketosis. And ketosis is different from a thing called keto uh, or diabetic ketoacidosis which is where people got scared of ketones and ketoacidosis, that happens when you don't have a functioning pancreas. So that is a concern in diabetics or if you have injury to your pancreas and it's just not working because you need both elevated ketones and elevated um, glucose at the same time and then it creates an acidotic state and that is bad news bears. But by you eating a lot of fat and low carb, you're not gonna, get, you're not gonna do that as so long as you have a functioning pancreas. Use ketogenic, you know, sure, if you want to from time to time, but I've talked to people who are like, yeah, I'm doing a ketogenic diet and I'm you know, still drinking my Diet Coke and doing all, I'm like, you're missing the point. Start here. Like, to me, it's more of a fad diet that's trying to, to get around the hard work. Really, is what it is. And again, it has utilization. It has amazing potential in cancer management and, or, and as an adjuvant treatment for chemotherapy. A year. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. And that, that's the same thing with like intermittent fasting. Like I would say, you know, if you want to like, and you know, maybe even not just intermittent fast, but not eat anything for three days straight. And I don't mean a juice cleanse. I mean like literally like water and not eat anything for three days. Cool. Once a year? Sure. 
If you want to, yeah, if you want to put yourself in a ketogenic state once, you know, every so often, sure, go for it. But not as a diet to follow every single day. I just have a hard time, you know, believing that that's necessary. And also, if you follow this approach, you're going to be getting more protein and more fat and less dense carbohydrate than most people anyway. And so your body's going to become better at utilizing fatty acids, period. So, anything else? Have I talked your ears off? Are you guys just like, oh my God, shut up. I'm so tired of listening to you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> awesome, yeah, I can keep going. So if you guys have more questions, I'm here. But I also know you guys, you know, it's two hours, so you guys get out of here as well. If you need to, they might want to close up the box. They might be like, leave. Um, but otherwise, I'm here. I can answer questions, you know. Um, I am not a doctor. I am not your dietitian specifically, so I will not be providing medical advice unless you want to choose to work with me, and that's a different story. But um, all of this is just, you know, for general purposes, and you know, this is generally held information. Yeah, of course. I would just say, guys, uh, for the record, if, if you do want to try that liver, if you if you do get it from that website that she said, it's, it tastes like sausage. Yeah, it's actually it's. It's not disgusting. So that's something you want to try. <clears throat> Yeah, it tastes like sauce. Especially if you mix it with something like she said, it's, it's you know, There's not two E's and two F's in <laughs> beef, it's just beef. Um, the, so the website is US Wellness Meats, but their website address is actually Grassland Beef. And they sell both a liverwurst and what's called a Braunschweiger or Schweiger. I actually recommend starting with this one because it um, the brown Schweiger is actually like 40% liver and 60% muscle meat, which seems like it would be way more intense, but it's actually of a milder flavor. Whereas liver worse, which you'd think would be more liver, is actually got liver, heart, and kidney in it mixed with the muscle meat. But both of them are because they are still 60% muscle meat. It's as he's saying, it actually tastes good. It, it smells a little different to some people when cooking. Like my husband is always like, you cooked liver this morning, didn't you? But when you actually eat it, it doesn't taste like that at all, I promise. And again, I give you some tricks. But I just, I throw it out there because we want to be able to bypass the dirty work and we want to be able to take a pill to get it done. That's how you get it done. And that's also how you know that your body's absorbing what it needs to. Because again, like folic acid and stuff, like how much are your body's actually absorbing? How much is just pissing out? Like. But when you get it in a whole food context, you're getting other nutrients than just a single nutrient, and it's not synthetic. And we just don't know. Like, we haven't studied those things. We have said that like synthetic vitamin C is, is safe, but we don't really know long term. And people used to get nervous about the vitamin A and like toxicity levels, that's, it's a fat, because that's a fat metabolized vitamin. You can build up high levels of it. The problem is, is all the research done on vitamin A was done on synthetic vitamin A, <laughs> so it wasn't in context. One and two. The other story that was vitamin A in context was a dude who ate an entire bear liver in one shot. So don't do that, <laughs> and you'll be fine. <laughs> I think it was a pol I think it was a polar bear actually. I think it was a polar bear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't judge anybody, by the way. If you go eat with me, I don't judge you. You do what you do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, as far as like order of operations when eating something, so like obviously my plate is always has balance out between protein, carbohydrates, fats. Mm -hmm. um, have you experimented, or do you know anything about as far as like order of eating those? So I stay uh, full or longer, or do they have different effects? Like let's say I eat my protein, I consume all my protein first, then I work my way to my carbs on my plate. How far apart are you eating these things? So it doesn't fucking matter. All in the stomach gets churned up and goes out. It's not gonna. But now you got me thinking. Okay, well, if you're saying now because you asked me. Yeah. So if, so if you were to go from a true evolution evolutionary standpoint, in the wild, you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have gone and picked your blueberries, put them in your pocket, and gone and hunted your gazelle, and, and like carried it back, and then got your no. You would have been eating that off the bush as it goes. It's there. I'm taking. It, I'm gonna eat it as is. So. Most in the wild, we wouldn't have been eating mixed modal meals at all, for the most part. But it, it's modern era. It's it's real hard to convince someone, you know, eat a plate of just steak and then eat a you know plate of veggies. And I mean, yeah, 20 minutes or like through, two hours later, eat your vet. So, 
but yeah, as far as that goes, like your stomach mixes it all up and it all goes into the same and <laughs> it's not, not really gonna, gonna change that much. But you might find, you know, one of the reasons you might, it doesn't really work that way, but you know, if you do eat your protein first, oftentimes you are gonna fill up because protein is pretty full. So it might mean you eat less of whatever else is on your plate. So, yeah. Related to that, uh -huh. what about insulin response timing? Give me more, what do you mean? So. Cause that's, that's a big, that's a big question. Carbohydrate intake during the day. Yeah. For, um, Optimizing insulin response? Yeah. Well, so if you are, again, what, what are we talking, what do we say when we say, what do we mean when we say carbohydrate? If your carbohydrates are primarily coming from veg. I'm talking about whole, 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 uh, whole sources. Right, so if you're, if you're talking about like vegetables and fruit and stuff, the amount that it's going to um, jack your insulin, your carbohydrate or your glucose response that will then, or like, huh, the amount that it's going to up your glucose that then your insulin response is gonna come on top of it is gonna be so super low. Um, comparatively to those dense carbs that it just isn't, is, is not that important. Um, and the truth is when you can start to utilize fats as an energy source, because like what do we store on our body? It, like we store fat for, for long-term survival. We actually store very little carbohydrate, really, really little carbohydrate. We can store infinite amounts of fat, right? We've all seen, you know, like what my 700 pound life or whatever it is, like you can base, um, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's um, well, we usually store C16, which is a um, a certain kind of long chain fatty acid. Um, but yes, we uh, we store we store those fatty acids, and we can pretty much just keep storing and 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 keep storing of fat, but not carbohydrate, because fat was the long term survival mechanism. So if you're not providing a whole lot of easily processed carbohydrates, your body does a really good job at supplying you with constant energy through fat sources. So it starts to stabilize the blood sugar and then that stabilizes insulin. So there's not really, unless you specifically have issues with prediabetes or type two diabetes or type one diabetes, I'm not terribly concerned about those because they will even themselves out, those spikes and valleys. Yeah, so I, think, I, think, I think my question was a little more geared towards, uh, I did keto for six months okay. this, this in 2017, and I started noticing a difference in um, in both inflammation levels in my body and the subjective experience yeah. of inflammation, yeah. and, um, sleep, mm -hmm. and also training intensity, when uh, or the, the the ability to have a higher training intensity uh, when 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 triggering an insulin reaction to to uh, uh, you know some carbohydrate in, yeah. in the day, yeah, and, and then staying somewhat fasted through a, through. A sure, and that might be how your body works well. Yeah. Cool. That might not be how my body works well. So if you found it worked for you, then go for it. Um, but I've not seen any, anything that's gonna prove to me that across the board, everybody needs to be doing that. Got it. So. Okay. Yeah, I was curious. Yeah, some, well, and, and. Some people don't eat carbs at all at night, right? Yeah, well, I think, and I think that's one of those things. It's the same reason why, I mean, I think, same reason why people say you shouldn't eat after like eight o'clock at night. I think that comes from, it's really what it is, is it because then it limits your calorie intake and it just it limits your intake, period. And so you're just doing less. So I think they say don't eat carbs at night for the sheer fact that then you've limited the amount of hours of the day you're eating them. And so you're just not eating as much. Whereas I actually do the opposite. When I start introducing dense carbs into the life of my clients, which we start with usually like the list is pretty limited and you know, it's like sweet potato and taro and things like that. I actually want them to load that little, it's not, and it's not that much when we start because I want to see how their body does. Because most people can do with a lot less carbohydrate than they think, um, dense carbs. Not vegetables, dense carbs. I actually load it at night because it does this really wonderful trick of putting you to bed. And I've had, especially my military guys. My, my, my military guys, um, I've had some of my guys who just awful sleep. I mean, if you guys know anything about, you know, they just, those guys do not sleep well. And I can throw a little bit of carbohydrate at them at night and they're just like, whoo, sleep like a baby. And um, when we digest, we're in what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. It's called rest and digest. We forget the rest part of rest and digest. And if you go and you watch any kind of animal, right, the lion hunts, lionesses hunt, they take down some big old animal. First off, they put it down, and the lions eat first, 
And a lot of people think that's because, well, it's the lion, like bringing it back for the men. It's really because the ladies are still in sympathetic nervous system. And they're like, we can't eat because our blood is in our muscles and our eyes and our heart, not in our gut to digest. We got to down regulate for a minute and then they eat. And then what does everybody do? Take a bath, take a nap. What does your dog do? Your cat. They eat and they sleep right? You're resting and digesting at the same time. So the only time of day we really get to utilize that is at night, sadly. Um, so yeah, that's, so I would actually throw, I throw, I throw that little bit of carbohydrate later in the day. That makes sense though. I mean, I, <laughs> I always hear people, you eat your, you get your protein in after a workout, yeah. 30 minutes before, after a workout, it's like, window of gains. You're no, you're not. And so, and that, yeah. Right. It, well, and so that's why we have shakes yeah. because your gut doesn't have any blood in it to actually digest, and so it can bypass the need for digestion and it can ups, like like absorb it. The thing is, is yes, you do. There is literally a thing called the window of gains. Like there is a window within which your muscles are more receptive towards bringing in the nutrition and doing the repair and everything. But the interesting thing is that if you actually like eat, have been eating throughout the day, and you've had something in your, to eat like one to two hours before training. Your body has broken it down and all of those nutrient components are in your bloodstream to then be absorbed during that window. <laughs> so you don't need to put it in during the window. You just need to have it in the blood when that window happens. I mean, but then what's your argument? You're waking up from sleep, coming in at 5.30 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. You're, you're coming from a... You can train faster. Fast. Sure. It all depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to do. But there's some benefit to training fasted. Again, if you think evolutionarily, you might not have eaten for three days when you sell that kudu and you had to go hunt it. So there's something to be said for doing that. It takes time. Don't expect that tomorrow morning you're gonna wake up and go fast it if you've never done it and you're gonna get a great workout. You're not gonna PR grace, but maybe in three months you will doing it fasted. So back to the powder yeah. intake. So in the real world, we, we're all busy, right? We're yeah, of course. Lives. We're chasing yeah. kids and we're chasing yeah. stuff. So, you know, I'm in between Houston in Austin in the car and, it's, you know, and I'm hungry. Yeah. I, I shake a shake up and, or it's, I stop at K-Bob's and I grab a chicken fry. So, uh, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and grabbing a, that, but sometimes I, I mean, I can't. So is, is a shake bad? I mean, that's kind of my meal substitute sometimes. So if it is. So I would argue, I would argue. It's all of them that it's like the only thing is like, Collagen, protein. I, w I would argue that it, I understand the busy, and I'm not going to say this to offend you, but let me say this, it's priorities. It's what your priorities. How are you spending your time? How are you choosing? Because we all make time to come here, right? We all account, you account, even with all that busy schedule, you account for the fact that you are going to get in the car, and you're going to drive, and you're going to sit in traffic, and it's going to take X amount of time to do that, and then you're going to be here for X amount of time, and then it's going to take X amount of time to get home. Right. How much time are you really spending putting into your food? If you actually set a timer and, and timed yourself about how much time you really, we really spend on our food and our nutrition, it is not nearly as much as we say it is and how much we think it is. And again, there are tricks you can do. Um, my friend carries what she calls purse meat, which, <laughs> so I'm not a huge fan. Like deli meats you got to be careful with because they do have, they can have, but you can find good quality deli meats out there. So like, Carry some just like good quality chicken breast with you. Like, you know, you can get Applegate Farms hot dogs, munch on those, Epic bars. You know, those are always, always, always gonna be a better option. Yes, there are like three, hand, three protein powders out there that I could suggest that are, I hate using better, right? Because the better, op the best option is food. And when we try and do better, well, it's, you know, like if you go to the, go to the party and you're like, there are Triscuits and fruit and all these other things. And it's like, you know, and then the, like the dessert, well, I ate the Triscuit. That was a better option than eating, you know, the whatever. It's like, yeah, but the best option was eating the fruit and the vegetables. You still didn't make the best option. So yes, I have those things and I do utilize them with some clients sometime, but I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't want you going to buy them because I want you to try instead do the other stuff. And also, not for nothing, if you do like roasted veggies and all that other crap, you can carry that in your car. It's not gonna go bad. You can leave it in your car for a few hours. Now, Texas, August, maybe not. <laughs> but like most of the time you can usually leave it. And those epic bars, you know, I mean, I, I have 
as you saw, I was digging in there for a while because I have multiple ones in there <laughs> that I carry with me. So, you know, you start, you have, you, it's a process, but it's reorienting how we think about it. We think about the protein as being the most convenient thing, but there are other ways you can get real food and still make it convenient. Roast history chicken, read the ingredients. Because rotisserie chicken at Costco was actually pretty crappy. There's a lot of shit in there. But like rotisserie chicken, like Whole Foods, so there's like one that's called Naked, that's like nothing on it. And they've got one that's like classic, I think, that's got just salt and pepper. Those are good. And you can always have that in the fridge. I love rotisserie chicken. That's a great one. I have that on my list as like cheaters. <laughs> good ways to get that. And I do, one of the things you're going to get is a list. There are brands, like things in label, with labels on them that I do think are quality that I recommend to you. You know, so like if you want a mayonnaise, it's high quality. I have that on that list. So, you know, it's not to say that everything in a package is a problem. We just have to read the label. <laughs> so, anything else? No? All right, sweet. Thank you guys so much. This was awesome.